I have another TR6 here to have a look at. Um, this one's got a couple of uh, different problems. Um, one of which is the, uh, the ring gear on the starter. I have to take the transmission out to uh, replace the ring gear. But one of the other things was typical of TR6 is it's got a clunk on the back or a noise on the back. All the differentials uh, add new mountings. Um, the bracket up on the top that usually breaks, that's been boxed already, so that's okay. There's no movement in the diff at all. It's solid, the shafts are okay, everything's good. But what the problem is, is due to the wire wheels. So what I do with the wire wheels, I've loosened this first already. I've done it, I did it with the hammer earlier. And I got my wheel kind of waggling, pull it back, and then all I do is tighten up my wheel so it's hand tight. I get hold of the wheel and you can see there's a lot of movement on the splines. There's not supposed to be that much. That's where my clunking is coming from. It's the same on the other side, on the other back wheel, and it'll be the same on the front. If I, I can test it on the front splines pretty easy, I just get somebody in the car and put the brake on, do the same thing with the cover and try it. And then if the uh, if the wheel's got the same amount of play and while the wheels are knackered, it's the splines. And all the splines in the wheels can be worn and it's no good just buying new wheels because the splines that they go onto are liable to be worn. If you put new wheels on old splines, you'll wear the wheels out pretty quickly and vice versa. Um, so it's quite an expensive proposition. I think what we're going to end up doing on this car is going back to his original steel wheels because um, I haven't checked the spokes or anything. You check the spokes by running a, a, a wrench or a screwdriver around the spokes and listen to the clicking. When you hear it, it should be fairly high pitched. When you hear a dead one, it'll be dunk, dunk. It's like pretty obvious. Anyway, we're gonna change it to the wheels and that's it. So that's where my noise is. So I'm gonna get on and uh, take the transmission out. Got to do the ring gear. The interior in the car is tan, so it's really, I uh, have to be careful with it. So I have to take out both seats and all the uh, um, centre console here and the centrepiece, so going down over the uh, transmission cover. And then uh, I got to take the transmission cover itself off. So the first place I start actually, I start on the steering wheel because once this is out of the way, it makes life a lot easier. I have the transmission off the uh, back of the engine now. Um, you can see it's clear. I've taken off the flywheel and um, the clutch assembly. I've took that off already. I don't lift the entire transmission out because one, it's bloody heavy, and two, I don't want to catch any of the panels or anything else. The less I move it, the less damage I'm likely to do. So I just pull it on, pinch cardboard here, then I'm ready to go back in. Um, that's the easiest way for me to do it. As I say, it's really heavy with the overdrive on. Now the flywheel um, and the ring gear, uh, I've took over to the bench along with the clutch. The clutch assembly was fine, the release bearing wasn't making the noise, there was no problem there. Uh, what I actually took it out for, if you remember, was for the uh, ring gear. And it's quite interesting what the problem with the ring gear actually is. It's over here on the bench. Now I've got my flywheel, uh, my clutch assembly, which as I said is okay. On top of that, I've got the mounts for the transmission. You can see they're broken. Um, so obviously we're going to replace them. I got the starter. Now if you have a look at the pinion on the starter, that was the first interest. I first took this off a couple of weeks ago when I looked at the car. And the teeth are okay on the pinion, which made me suspect uh, the fact the ring gear was damaged. The reason um, I assumed it was a ring gear, um, because when the car stopped on compression, when you stopped it on the key and let it turn by yourself, it would stop on compression. It only, with a six cylinder, it'll only um, stop uh, in three places on the uh, flywheel, which is 120 degrees apart. Um, so when it comes up to compression, it stops. That's where the resistance is. So when the, when the starter failed, or, uh, uh, or whatever, um, you could put the car in gear and push it, push it forward about a foot or so and move the ring gear around. Engage the start straight away, click like nothing wrong with it. So obviously it's on the uh, ring gear. So when I took the ring gear, what I was expecting was teeth to be missing on uh, the three places, or at least bashed up, but that isn't what I found. What I found was actually on the ring gear, 
the weathering gear is cut, is that there's teeth on the front of it, I've got to put my glasses on, there's teeth on the front of it to allow the pinion to come in and slot into the teeth. So if you look at the, the starter motor, the starter motor is mounted this way and the transmission is this side of it and the engine this side, which means the pinion goes in that direction towards the transmission. When the flywheel is on, this ring gear now, with the teeth on it, the teeth are facing the transmission, which is the wrong way. The bevel on the teeth should be this side, so that when the pinion goes in and hits it, it hits the bevel on the teeth, not on the uh, back side of it. And if you, if, you put, if you put the flywheel down from that, you can have a look, you can see all the marks on the back of it, where the pinion's been hitting it, and it's been working, but it's not been doing the uh, ring gear a lot of good. And it's also taken quite a lot of the teeth off the back of it. And on the other side, you can see there's barely any marks because the pinion hasn't been hitting this side, it's been hitting the other side, which is the wrong one. Because this, as I said, has got the bevel to start it off. So what I've got to do is take the ring gear off and um, uh, replace it with another one. Now I made a video already I made a video on replacing ring gears and a couple of guys made the comment that I should have said the ring gear taking it off. Well this might be a case in a question where I could take off the ring gear and kind of save it. But to be quite honest, the amount of time it's going to take me to take this off, I think the ring gear is 30 bucks. So I'm not going to spend an hour trying to tap this off and be nice to it, forget it. I'm just going to take it off, put a new one on and put it on the right way around, put it on the car and then uh, that will work. So uh, I'm going to be waiting for my parts, um, I have a few other things to put on it as well, I've got handbrake cables and I've got to change the wheels, so that's what I'm going to do while I'm waiting. Um, so uh, we'll be back shortly when we uh, come to put the transmission in. So first thing I need to do is get the transmission in a bit closer. Shove it in gear. Use his second is better. Yeah. So that keeps now my primary shaft will turn to line up with my centre plate. So now I just get my tool. Want my handle this side. Turn now. So now all I have to do is put the bolts on around the bell housing, I'll put the ones on the top, put the rest of them in, I can use a strap while I put the cross member in under here, the little cross member in the end, and the mounts, and then we'll let it down, take the piece of wood out of the engine, and, uh, and that's it. I'm back on the uh, green TR6, as you can see I've got the uh, transmission back in, in it, and I'm just doing the brakes now, I put new wheel cylinders on it. The transmission by the way, I don't put all the interior back in until I finish the rest of the car and I can drive it. Then once I can drive it, make sure my clutch and everything is working as it's supposed to, uh, then I put the interior back in when I'm all clean on that stuff. Anyway, I'm doing the brakes, uh, I have to put new wheel cylinders on it and new shoes. One of the uh, wheel cylinders uh, was seized up, I undid the line on the back and even though I won the uh, uh, a little um, nut up on the back, it didn't do any good, it still snapped the brake line because the brake line was a bit iffy anyway, the metal one. So I'm just making new ones of those over on my bench. Um, I'm going to make the brake line up, I've got new fittings for it, a piece of uh, brake line made up. I do have a flaring tool here. Plant that in there. Line up my bit of pipe and then do my single floor first and then do my double floor. So do it, that's nice. Okay, you can see the uh, flare on the end, so now I'll do the other end. 
you can see I've got all my uh, parts and everything for the uh, Triumph um, all here ready to go back on anyway I'm going to do the rest of my brake line and uh, carry on with the front suspension I've taken the rotor off the uh, TR um, I'm going to change it, that's why I'm not bothered about marking it. I'm going to change the rotor, I have a new one here. And another reason that I have to take the rotor off the hub anyway is because I have to fit the new wheel studs for the steel wheels. The steel wheels have longer wheel studs than the wire wheels because they only hold the adapters on and the longer wheel studs interfere with the back of the, uh, back of the wheel when it goes on the splines on the spoke to wheels. So it has longer studs on. So I can't get the studs in with the rotor on so I have to take the rotor off if I'm taking it off the rotor is not the best it's got to go for a uh, certification anyway so I'm just going to put the new rotors on and that's the end of it they're not all expensive uh, and they are actually and all said done quite expensive uh, quite important <coughs> I have my new rotor now and I put it in the vise, I put material in it to protect it so I don't mark the edges of it. On the hub I put the studs in already and also on the back of it I've cleaned up the machine first on the back of it here where it fits into side, inside the uh, rotor because this centres it, the rotor on the actual uh, hub. So when I put it in now, it'll fit in, it'll be a nice fit. On the uh, studs that go in if you've got any damage on the head of the bolt you have to replace it you've got to use grade 5 at least and make sure you've got a, a, a shank on the back of it uh, the shanks quite important that goes through the disc if you have thread all the way up your thickness of your bolt is actually less than what it is when the shank is on it um, so even if you buy a bolt that's a bit longer and cut it shorter so you get the shank that's better and make sure it's a grade 5 a curious thing on the wheel wheel studs um, on the wheel studs the ones on the front have got a shoulder on it that goes into the hub and the ones on the back are tapered so if you have to change the studs make sure you put them the right way around they're tapered on the edge on the back here and the shouldered on the ones on the front just a small thing anyway I'm gonna put this all back together now then I'm gonna do the other side uh, and put my front springs in is next Just taking off the uh, spring compressor tool that I use. I put both the springs in the front now. So I've just got to put my shock absorber back and um, I bleed the brakes and I'm ready to go. That's about it. I've finished the car now, I've put all the interior back, uh, done everything. All I've got to do now is take it to the paint shop and um, have the trunk lid repainted because the guy put a cover on when it was wet and then put something on top of the cover so it damaged all the paint on the trunk lid apart from that everything's good I drove the car with the steel wheels on now a lot of the problems are gone away I've got no clunks on the back and now I, I don't have that weird vibration on the front either uh, the main thing is sometimes with the spoke wheels when the hub gets a bit loose or the, the splines get a bit loose what can happen and I've seen it in extreme cases you put the brakes on and the, and the front wheel and the hub actually turns inside the wheel where the splines are it takes all the splines off and it's sometimes it's very difficult to get the wheel off I've had to cut them off with a welding torch before now um, but that's really extreme cases um, but anyway as I say all the vibration everything went away on the car so I've got to move this one out um, I have a, another MGB to bring in and I've got to shuffle a whole pile of stuff around so uh, that's it for now So I have an MGP here with a clutch problem. Um, it hasn't been driven for quite a long time, maybe uh, up to 10 years ago before it was when it was last driven. Um, I expect there'll be some other problems as well. I know there's going to be some problems with the brakes, but at the moment I can't drive it because I can't get it into gear. So um, that's my first job is to uh, see what the clutch is. I've looked at the hydraulics. The hydraulics aren't the problem. 
the hydraulics are working, it's just the clutch is uh, not free enough inside and it's not the plate sticking to the flywheel either, I've checked that one. Um, anyway, so i got to take the engine out see what the problem is. So that's what I'm going to do, uh, well that's my intention. Thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe to our channel as we appreciate the support and it does encourage us to make more videos.